time. <coughs> right, well, let's call the meeting to order. It's the Board of Public Works, uh, Wednesday, February 12th, 2014. Um, first, for your consideration, the minutes of the January 22nd meeting, the hearing. Uh, oh. Moves approved. It was a hearing. It was oh. a hearing. I didn't catch that. It was sorry. a meeting. Sorry. So right away we have a, <laughs> an <laughs> amendment. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> oh, we on TV? <laughs> uh, any, uh, would someone like to move that we accept it? Move, move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Great. you. Uh, could I have a motion to take old business number two? Out of order, Dave Valletta is here to uh, walk we'll move. us. I think Jim's going to walk. I'm providing support. Would you, would you like to make a public comment before we race past I'd, that part of the meeting? I'd like to make them as they come along, if I may. Um, okay. Let's see how that goes. We'll try that. Um, okay. Um, so that's... So moved. Second. All, right. All in favor of taking number two landfill out of order? Uh, uh, this big uh, panel size uh, sheet of paper in front of you is a uh, is a fiscal year 2014 mid-year budget um, summary. Um, I'm going to walk you through some of the key points. There's kind of a lot of numbers here, and I apologize for not getting this in front of you um, by email in advance of the meeting. But I think we can cover some of the uh, some of the key points. So, as you can see, the basic lay of the land here with the spreadsheet is um, on the left side, there's a description of, the, of the, the budget item, and as you get on the page, it's operation and maintenance, line items, capital line items, personnel costs, employee benefit costs, um, other direct costs, and then at the very bottom is um, the revenue projections that were made for the transfer station. <coughs> as you start to go from left to right, um, the first column of numbers was the value appropriated in the budget that the board approved. The next column to the right from there is the mid-year budget number, where we stand as of today. And then the column on the right is the projected end of the fiscal year budget for each of the line items. And then we have a few notes on the far right, which describes how we made our assumptions for the projections. So, can I just double check? The mid year is where we are today. today. Expenses so today. So it's not a six month figure. It's a seven and a couple. Well, I think it is a six month. It's a six month. Six months. It was ending January 3rd. Our fiscal year starts on July 1st? It does. July so it ends December 31st. December 31st. December 31st. Okay. So it's so six December 31st. And, and before we leave discussing the columns, Jim, yep. <coughs> projected is projected. It's our estimate of where we're going to end. So, on what so for example, looking at the totals in that first group, operations and maintenance, we appropriated three hundred twenty thousand, yep. but we expect to, we expect to only spend two hundred and eleven. That is true. Okay. And I'm just looking at the first line where it says we appropriated two thousand. We spent 227.10, but we're projected at 2,000. And that's because the electric, me electric meters. So we need, run backwards. So we need, we need to sort out the electric meters between the landfill and the transfer stations. Somehow they all got lumped together. And zero electricity has been charged to the landfill. So we need to separate those meters out. And my projection is that. Transfer stations alone will actually not spend more than two thousand over the course of the year, so that's why it looks odd. Okay. Bills paid for the wrong budget needs to be moved. <coughs> Can I go? Go mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. So um, I'm going to point out a couple of things here, and I'm, we're going to draw a couple of conclusions, and then we'll try to answer some questions and, and move from there. So as as uh, Terry Adapley pointed out. Um, the low, there are lower expenses projected. We've projected 211,000 under the operation and maintenance budget versus 320 um, that was appropriated. Um, as you go down the list, um, 
personnel costs are a little bit uh, under budget. As you can see, 163,000 versus 181. Um, some of the other numbers, employee benefits are spot on, direct costs are spot on, and then the sum of the expenses is 482,000 and change. You can see the bottom part of the uh, spreadsheet is revenue, and uh, I'll just point out. The total revenue projected, and I'll circle back in a second on this, the total revenue projected is about 420000 So at this point, we're projecting roughly a $62,000 loss in the fund as a whole. And um, when you look at the numbers, what we basically have determined is that, um, well, let me point out a couple of other things. What we're basically determined is that we've We've sold fewer vehicle permits this year, so we have fewer customers, and we have sold fewer bags than was projected, as you would expect. And this this represents itself in a couple of ways on the table. If you go up to the top under trash removal, we had $140,000 appropriated for MSW and bulky waste disposal. Can you see that? Under operation and under trash removal oh. under operation and maintenance. Five two nine zero zero three. Yeah, that's true. Five two nine zero three. We appropriate one hundred and forty thousand. We're projecting about eighty eight thousand dollars of expenses there. That represents about sixty two percent of what the projected budget was. Okay. If you go all the way back down on the bottom and you look at the bag sales, we had three hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars projected in revenue. We're projecting about $186,000 in change in revenue. That represents about 55% of the revenue that we had projected. So basically the conclusion there is that we're operating at about a little more than half uh, of the activity that we projected would happen um, with the transfer station this year. So the deficit as a whole can mainly be attributed to um, the drop in revenue from the vehicle permits, which is estimated in the vicinity of $27,000, and the, the, uh, the change, the reduction in bag sales, which is about $152,000, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, and I think that's really the meat of it, um, as you can see. Less activity, loss of some customers. And there's other little minor points, but um, I think that's those are the main the main issues. And while you digest that, I will say that we're in the middle of preparing the budget for the next fiscal year. And as you can imagine, when we look at these numbers and then we project the next fiscal year, there's also uh, a deficit <coughs> that we're trying to work through at the moment. So, do you have a plan for the deficit? We have thoughts about the deficit. Um, the thoughts are you can reduce your expenses or you can raise your revenues. Rose laughing. She says that's amazing. <laughs> 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 Teach that every amazing. week. <laughs> uh, has come up with some creative ways. So what we've, t what we've talked about internally, just with the staff, we haven't really gone beyond Ned and myself, David and Andy, really talking about these things, that um, it's likely that if you raise the vehicle permit fee or the, the bag fee, that you may lose additional customers. Um, but you'll also note that the vehicle permit fee and fees for bags that people are paying in other communities exceed what the city charges people to use our system. In fact, there was an article in the Gazette three or four weeks ago about Belchertown. Their, their annual sticker for vehicles is like $100. So we're $25 or $100. So you can see, so in terms of raising revenue, it would be vehicle permits. We could raise the bag fees, but that may have a detrimental effect overall. So you look at the other side of the equation, if you can't raise the revenue, how do you get additional revenue in to provide the services that are being provided? And the other way to do that would be to consider um, either an infusion of money from the general fund. So we've talked about ways that that might happen. 
um, or could happen to offset some of the operational costs, or uh, possibly um, an overall uh, conversion of the operation of the transfer station to a general fund activity. So we haven't really talked about any of these things with the mayor, the finance director, but you can see that either you need an infusion of money, a reduction in what the uh, expenses are, or an increase in revenue. allow non-Northampton residents to use the transportation as it is now? No. That, that would seem like one thing we could consider. We'd like to have more, and it might be convenient for some people. A lot of, more than just a few, but not a big number. I mean, we could handle it. The, the plan here was to handle a lot more trash. Yeah, I mean, this, you're in direct competition when through Sonoma 10, so if you live in East Hampton and you have the opportunity of dropping trash off or buying a vehicle permit sticker, or you can pay the city of Northampton 25 bucks to come in, and we're going to make you buy our bags, and you can drop off a barrel of junk in whatever bag you want. Well, we're more likely to pick up business from Williamsburg. From the hills, yeah. yeah. People coming in. Commuters. Yeah. I mean, these, these are small towns. We'd need to check their fees to see how competitive we are with the other towns. But it doesn't cost any to open it up to them. To announce it. Well, they must, they might assure that they have a system where they do collection in their own community. Right, but it's not like, but it's an opportunity for the consumer to choose. I think part of the problem moving forward is that you could try that, but you can't balance a budget on that. I agree with that. Right. And then you get into business aspects like marketing, cost of advertising. I mean, you could put in something in the paper about doing that, but but it, it might not be enough to, to draw the additional uh, business. My question is just to clarify. Um, are you done? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you're wanting to clearly not have the solid waste enterprise fund have a deficit from, from uh, transfer station work. That is correct. Okay. So... <coughs> Um, but what do you think are the possibilities of setting this up as part of, and when you're saying general fund, you're talking about city general fund. That's correct. So do you think there's much of a chance besides uh, publicizing the fact that you're asking, I mean, that, that, that the general fund will, con the, the city council will consider contributing money from the general fund to solid waste <coughs> removal? We do not know. That's a discussion Ned will probably have with the mayor. Um, the bottom line is decisions need to be made about mm -hmm. services that are offered mm -hmm. and a way to fund them and present a budget that's balanced. Mm -hmm. the I moment, agree. Right. So yeah. at the moment we have services right. um, and we have talked about ways to move some of the expenses to the general fund in, in, a, in a way that would help balance the budget. But clearly it's a change in the way um, that the department was directed to operate this system, which was make it a fee-based system that doesn't lose any money. Well, <coughs> meanwhile, we can't we can't exacerbate the um, the deficit. I mean, it stands at twelve thousand now. We can't let it balloon up to sixty-two thousand. Well, we could this year because of other monies. This, the transfer station budget, we've divided it out from other solid waste enterprise fund monetary activities for the purposes of this discussion. Because the transfer station is supposed to stand on its own legs. If you looked at the whole budget, it would be hard for you to know that it's not standing on its own legs. And it's only through all the work David's put in to developing the summary that we know that it's not, it's not m making ends meet. So there would be some money to cover this year's deficit, but moving forward, uh, it would be not great to move ahead in a, in a deficit type of fashion. Chris? Um, so basically what I see is, as people use it less, uh, I, let me, let me go back. People 
people are using it less because we think because it costs more. Is that a reasonable sort of assumption? I would say. Okay. Um, I, I don't expect an answer at this moment, but I think it would be important for us to, as we move forward, have a better understanding of what options they're adopting as an alternative. The, the options, I, Whoever, I, could, I, yeah. could tell you, I could tell you what the options are. On the low end, the people that want to keep the trash cost as tiny as possible are probably going to Route 10 because they don't have a vehicle permit sticker and it's cheaper to get rid of a bag of trash up there. So the people that are trying to squeeze every last dime out of the money they spend are going there. The people that are more affluent and that can afford to not have to deal with the hassles of the traffic and bring in their stuff in the back of their car and everything and get all smelly, they're calling pedal people or they're calling Buso or they're calling one of the curbside haulers to come to their house and take the stuff away. So you've got, you've got people that can afford it, that have someone come and take it away, and you've got the people that are really struggling who may be going over there. So my guess is that we're losing some customers. At both end. I think that would be my guess. There's never been a viable alternative until the school opened up. Yes. And what you see on the South Street list, sir, if you're on that, mm -hmm. I mean, people occasionally will break into practically song and dance about do so. They almost have a concierge service that they trot over to the car, they take it for you. Or, I mean, I was at my neighbor's house for dinner last Sunday, and one of the first things from the people there told me was, where did that do so transfer station? Got rid of some stuff. It was really amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not working today. Can <laughs> uh, I make a comment? Yes. In looking at this, the income from recycling is reduced to the amount of the deficit. It's about sixty thousand dollars short for the year. Yeah, I can explain that. The well, numbers, the numbers aren't what they appear there because of. Um, the fact that some of the revenue um, for electronics, mattresses, Freon, and tires and things are actually shown in the sticker column because of the way that we, the way that they've been accounted for. But if you look at the actual, the actual revenue to, to what you're you're getting to, the MRF revenues that we get from Springfield are on, they're right on budget with what we had anticipated. So we're not seeing a reduction there. What we are seeing is a reduction in income from things like mattresses because we had assumed more activity with mat things like mattresses and tires and things like that. So we'd assumed there's just less activity. So just we'll look at mattresses for a second. We'd assumed more disposal costs and more revenue from those because we charge a fee to take them and we pay to get rid of them. If you look up um, at mattresses, you can see that we're projecting about $3,200 worth of expenses on mattresses. The corresponding revenue, which would sort of be a recycling revenue from those items, um, is also down quite a bit. So it wouldn't be possible for Dick to glean this um, accurately because because of the way the numbers are mixed a little bit. But the recycling numbers are um, pretty on with what we were expecting. In terms of um, getting revenue that covers the cost of, of handling the material, plus, plus the profit that we made from bringing stuff to Springfield, and uh, we're anticipating that the Springfield Murph Revenues may end up going down in the future, so if you, yeah. Now, can sure, I'm sorry. Can we anticipate the recycling uh, revenues changing dramatically one way or the other for the future? No. At one point, it was suggested that we market our own paper because the MRF is the MRF is just taking the paper and taking it to the, the mills, and the price of paper is still pretty high. Has anybody pursued that avenue? We haven't. We do, I do think it's a good idea, though. I mean, you see, you see these truckloads of bales coming out of Walmart, yeah. and the college is marketing their paper direct to the mills. Yeah, it's true. I was going to say that, that Smith College has, I think, eight cardboard balers, and they do have to separate paper from cardboard. And, and they, with the balers, they do get uh, quite a bit of money for that material. We can look into that. They may, there might be strings at the mark or whatever, but, and it's a good point. Dick has brought it up before, and I think you know, we're in agreement that it's got more value. Um, it's got, probably has more value if we could find a way to deal with it separately. Rob? I do think it's important to have a discussion with the mayor because the mayor was very much an instigator before he was the mayor. And when he was on the 
sell was to have us go in the direction of not being not being in the trash business. So if this is an ultimate direction that he doesn't want that in your discussion you find out that that we don't want to go into deficit, we don't want to take the money out of general fund, I think we need to acknowledge those factors and get it get the issue on the table. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile it's even if we raise sticker fees, for example, that wouldn't help us until next summer. That's correct. So have you begun really looking at the issue of how do we keep the twelve thousand dollar budget from ballooning up to sixty two? Um not in detail. Just one way we just one way that we could do it uh, temporarily and that would be to delay Thirty-three thousand dollar expenditure to restock our bags. So, based on the minimum purchase requirements for the bags, we what we end up buying for the bags, and we have to place a minimum order, ends up resulting in a, a purchase of uh, bags that would last us more than a year. So, if you would delay that to the next fiscal year, we would theoretically save thirty-three dollars in paper on the books for money that wasn't spent. But Eventually, if the intention is to keep the system moving, then you have to buy those bags and go back to the picker. See, it seems like a reasonable thing to hold off on until the conversation with the mayor occurs. Absolutely. I mean, you, you don't want to buy years worth of bags if somebody all of a sudden decides you're going to pull, plug in the whole thing or whatever. You want to keep all those options open, right? What are the estimated um, number of days left of, on the bag? Would you say it's six months, or would you say it's more like eight months? Or? It's probably four or five months. We have we have a full, the large bag uh, inventory is close to bring us to the end of the fiscal year. The medium and small bags will carry us well beyond the new fiscal year. Are we still using the old large bags? No, we're just using those. Should be used up towards the end of this fiscal year. So we have at least. Four months. Right. And we do the bags, we have minimum orders too of $16,000 for each size bag. <coughs> so, just so you're aware of that. So, it would it be safe to say that we won't see a budget deficit growing too much beyond where it is now? Maybe it'll go to 20 or something, but we're not going to see $61,000, $62,000 in a few months. If we didn't buy the small, not to right. be. To, to manage inappropriately, but if we, I just want to be clear in my mind, if we didn't buy minim, the medium and small, we might save thirty-two thousand dollars in this budget. In this budget, in this budget yes. So it would be you're still going to end up with a 30, 20, 20, high twenty thousand dollar deficit right. unless other changes are made. I mean, these were true. We made reasonable assumptions in the projections. <clears throat> so unless unless there's something drastic that changes, you know, you're going to end up in the, in, if we delay the, the purchase of the bags, you will end up in the high 20s in the deficit. <clears throat> and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to ask what the turnaround time that we looked into to marketing on papers and trying to get some revenue from the paper, the, the time to, it would take to get that as started as a project more than six months? It would take a little while. I mean, my sense, although I don't know much about it, is that we would then have to have two separate paper collections, one for cardboard and one for paper. And well, <coughs> not necessarily. Not necessarily. Right. right. So we would have we have to evaluate the terms of the MRF contract to see if we're obligated to bring everything. That might be the case. I think mm -hmm. might go one way or another. But we need to we need to review our obligations under the contract. Mm -hmm. And then we would need to find um, locations where we could bring paper and cardboard only as we collect it and then see what the value is. And that might save, you know, it might save some, might increase the revenue some. Um, it definitely has more value, as Dick has indicated. Part of the problem with some of this is that uh, we don't have a full-time <coughs> recycling coordinator anymore. So we're straight out in engineering and we can look at, you know, we can look into these things. I'm not sure how long it would take to make a few phone calls. I don't think it would take that long to see if that it would be feasible to get something in place like that. Uh, actually, MJ. Yeah, I, my question is, um, with the reduction in the number of people who bought stickers and the reduction in the number of bags that have been sold, have we reduced any staffing? No. Um, so we still have the 
Your Transfer thing. stations open the same number of hours for the same staffing as no. we expected. Have we looked at that at all? No, we have not. It's busy. On Saturdays, it is. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's busy. Oh. I mean, you know, yeah, it's busy. So it's not intuitively obvious that <coughs> you can take a look and just tell a couple no, people to go home. No, I know that, but staffing is usually a big part of our budget. So and, and, right. and you recall as well that when we closed Glendale, we felt there would be some increase in activity here. Mm -hmm. So even if even if we just maintain the same level of activity in some way, you know, it would be busy. But it's a good point. I mean, that, those would be the things that you'd look at, right? Can you change hours or reduce staff or try to find a way to cut the losses a little bit as time goes on? Mm -hmm. But we just finished this analysis, so we haven't really, we're just trying to tell you where we are. We haven't come up with the solutions yet. <coughs> were you surprised by it? I'm not surprised by much. <laughs> Do we need bailers, or is that just an optional way of handling it? We don't need bailers. We can use the compaction equipment we have, right? And then my other question was, did we? does this budget reflect savings on having just a part-time recycling coordinator? Yes. So if we were to go, so that's something that still has a probably, we need to think about for next year, if, that we go back to what the status is for that staff position. It's a factor. Could we look forward to um, your analysis uh, in a couple of weeks? What the solution is to raise like 50,000 bucks would be heroes. I'd love that opportunity. <laughs> or or trim the sales uh, slightly. Sure. I, I mean, it doesn't have to be a foregone conclusion that we run up a $30,000 deficit. Um, I mean, we don't want to wait a month or two months to think about it. Does that seem reasonable? Mm -hmm. What about, is it too soon for the discussion with the mayor to occur also? No, I think that could go concurrently. Okay. I, doesn't that seem? I think those are two good outcomes. better news on that. It is what it is. But there's better news further on the agenda, fortunately for you. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of the sheet. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for doing the work. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Um, I think that's the right around. And yeah, I'll bet... Long it's long a, oh? As long as you show the record email to Mike? Or uh, we can make him a copy. It's, I don't care. Okay. I don't think Mike's coming tonight, so. No, it's not. I'm just spitballing here, but I'll bet number one under old business is why you're here. Yep. Okay. So Doug is here to help us with number one. Could I have a motion to take that out of the table? Okay. Okay, all there. Thank you, Dave. Aye. Just a little background. Um, we had the uh, another one of the ward meetings on Monday, Ward Seven. Um, typical attendance, thirty people or so. Um, generally a, a friendly crowd. I think um, again the questions were procedural. There was just clarification types of questions, not a lot of hand-wringing about the overall intent of this thing. Um, the EDLU, which is the Economic and Land Use Subcommittee of the City Council, has uh, passed their endorsement, I don't know if it's a, actually an endorsement, but when the City Council received the proposal for the ordinance, they referred it back to Ordinance, ADLU, and the Youth Commission. The Youth Commission has endorsed the proposal. ADLU has forwarded, forwarded their comments to the Ordinance Committee. The <coughs> ordinance Committee took their first look at it on Monday. They're going to do another look at it on the 25th of this month, and that's going to be uh, considered to be the hearing for the City Council on the proposed, uh, proposed stormwater enterprise. Is it 21st? 
twenty fifth. Um, six thirty, council chambers. Um, so the next thing that they're looking for is uh, Jesse Adams and Ryan O'Donnell, O'Donnell have proposed some amendments to the uh, proposal that we submitted to the city council. And the ordinance committee would like to hear from the Board of Public Works uh, as far as these proposed amendments. And that's a document with the uh, corrections that you've you got here. So there's two. I have two, yeah. The, okay. one, the, one the, the, the red one, I guess, is what we're going to start with. So <clears throat> ordinance committee is basically planning to move through their process and report to the Council of Art before the end of this month. That will clear the decks for the, the full city council to consider this issue in March, which will be terrific because I think I mentioned at the last meeting there was a big meeting at City Hall with the assessor, the treasurer, or Susan Wright, the finance director, uh, tax collector, all of the departments within the city administration who might have anything to do with the uh, the enterprise fund. And it was decided that the most practical solution to setting up the budgets that uh, they're mentioning that they're working on the budgets is the budgets are being prepared as if this will be successful. It's easier to switch gears and quickly take this enterprise fund out of their calculations than it is to act like it's not going to happen and then scramble to make it happen. Uh, but in any event, <coughs> there's some pressure to get a decision from the city council. And so that's good news that they're going to work on it in March. <coughs> yes. So is Doug going to take us through proposed changes? Or what? Jim, Jim may. Okay, cool. Do you want to do that? I do. Go, go through? Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. So we'll start. The, so the red, the one with the red at the top is where we're starting. Um, what we did is we checked, we tracked the changes that Councillor Adams and Councillor O'Donnell had suggested, and then we added comments in the right-hand margin for things that we can we can talk about. So if you go to page two, um, this is uh, in section 280-4 in the definitions. Um, Councillor Adams had suggested the inclusion of a definition for direct cost. And you can see the track changes, direct cost shall mean cost incurred in the operation and maintenance of the stormwater and flood control utility. Um, you have a similar uh, definition for indirect cost at the bottom of page two. Indirect cost shall mean benefits, uh, insurance, and costs paid by the city of Northampton um, separately that are lackable to the uh, direct cost of stormwater and flood control. So in the, in the comments, um, what we have said is that um, well, let me, let me step back. The, con the concern of the councilor is that um, revenues that will be raised by the new utility may somehow be used for city activity not directly related to um, the purpose of the utility. So the, the goal of some of the changes was to try to sort of tighten up the financial aspects of the management of the utility. So our comment um, is, is sort of a question under GF, JL5. It says, has, has the use of this definition been compared to Mass General Law Chapter 44 and Department of Revenue guidance that governs enterprise funds? So the meaning of that basically is that um, the Department of Revenue tightly regulates um, the implementation and use of enterprise funds, and including auditing of revenues and expenditures within those funds. So I think if you were to talk to the finance director at, at City Hall, she would say, you know, these, the enterprise funds are, are tightly regulated and audited, and it provides, it provides that needed level of protection from misuse of um, spending money within an enterprise fund. So we're basically suggesting, um, given that the enterprise funds need to be operated in accordance with the DOR requirements and the, and the laws, is it really necessary to add these definitions? So we're asking the council to, to consider that. And what are they actually necessary? If I could just add a comment, the issue is it doesn't say anything about debt service. So if you want to be nitpicky, you say, well, wait, you can't pay off bonds with this money. 
that's, that's not listed here. Construction costs are not listed here. Engineering and design services are not listed here. So once Jesse tried to began to go down the road of specifying how it could be spent, we have to make sure that it's inclusive. So it's parsing it's parsing the, the determination of a, the definition of cost in, in a way that might be deemed restrictive and unnecessary. Um, I'm unfamiliar with the way uh, local ordinances are drafted. Um, at the federal level, there are, there are two pieces of language that go along with every piece of legislation. One is the legislative language, which is what I would equate this to be. Um, and the other is um, a sort of uh, a narrative that, that is drafted by the uh, Committee of Jurisdiction that, that dictates its intent, okay. um, it would be sort of the comment portion of, of this thing here. And I, I don't, again, having never looked at city ordinances, I don't know if there's a, a, an analogous sort of thing. But the, the, the advantage is, is that you have, um, in what we call the, uh, the conference language, uh, the ability to articulate what your intent was when you did this thing. Right. Yeah, it's a good point. We don't have that. Okay. Is it not covered under purpose, which is on the prior page? No, his, his point is that when you make a change to a proposed ordinance, usually you describe why you want the change. Right. So he's asking, do we have something like that from Jesse Adams and from uh, Councilor O'Donnell? And we don't. For we instance, really, we don't know their intent. For instance, if you're looking at the V22 Osprey, and you and you say we're going to restrict the funding on this piece of lit, on this program to 250 million this year. Um, if you go to this other document, what it says is members of the committee are increasingly concerned about the viability of this program. I mean, it, it, it's literally a narrative that that allows you when you go back to look at it and say um, this is how we did what we did, that there were good reasons for it, you know, um, it, 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 it's, it's a really useful tool. Um, so you're talking about the specific changes that they're proposing. Yeah, That's and why, the and, and why, you know. I mean, because what we've got here is a really good narrative about, you know, what the concerns are of all the people involved. Um, that won't be reflected in the final document. So what we would, what, what our goal here ultimately, at least from our end, is to have a document that we can send back to the counselors that have their track changes and then some version of these comments, depending on what the board wants to say, that goes back to them that describes the board's intent for commenting. So as far as these two definitions go, um, we're question, I guess we're asking the question about whether they're necessary. And then if they feel like they're necessary, we have provided some suggested language which might broaden the definitions to make it perhaps less um, problematic in the future. So if you look under um, comment four, um, in quotes, we're suggesting that they want to keep the language of the definition for direct cost to change it to say, direct cost shall mean the costs incurred by providing stormwater and flood control services as defined below. And then when you go to the definitions, of stormwater services, there's a reference to debt service, capital expenses, other things that Terry had mentioned a minute ago. Bottom of page three. Bottom of page three, so that um, you know that broadens the definition in a way that might make more sense. So these are more suggestions, I guess, for the counselors to consider than anything. Same token uh, on page three, comment JL9 um, has a similar change for indirect costs, but we add that um, their costs for <coughs> stormwater and flood control services as the cost below. So again, just an attempt to tie it to something broader. I'm comfortable with those changes. What about you? I mean, you're concerned about the enumeration. Uh, oh, I, no, I, 
I would be concerned if we leave it untouched gotcha. the way Jesse wrote it. Okay. Um, I've spoken with Jesse. Jim and I have worked on this. Doug has worked on this. I've spoken with Jesse and Ryan. Uh, Jesse was in a training all day today. He couldn't respond uh, in, in any detail. He's, he's not like stuck on exactly the way it was worded. Um, Maybe there's a way we, if if if, the, if this board is approximately comfortable with this, maybe there's room to approve it tentatively, pending any tweaks uh, that occur from further con conversations with the city council. <coughs> we our deadline is really the 25th. Uh, we need to have this all ship shape for the ordinance committee to consider. That's before our next board meeting. Mm -hmm. It is, unfortunately, so. <laughs> you should try to move on this tonight. Yeah. Do you want to keep going? Mm -hmm. So the next one on um, page four, um, uh, Council Adams has suggested um, some wordsmithing on here to say that um, the annual budget for stormwater management and flood control services shall be based upon recommendation, recommendations of the Board of Public Works and shall be approved by a majority vote of the City Council. And then he, uh, he deletes some words there and adds the City Council will set the annual budget and the amount that will be sufficient, etc. Uh, so we don't have any comment on that. That's, uh, you know, a majority vote. Uh, we feel that uh, it's sort of an incidental insertion because Ned has pointed out that would be their standard practice anyway for approval of the budget so we don't have any comment on it. The top of page five um, there's uh, there's some uh, language changes relative to what happens to the budget on year six. Uh, beginning in the sixth year the revenue shall be adjusted based on recommendations of the Board of Public Works subject to the approval of City Council as described above in section A Revenue raised by the utility shall not exceed $2 million per year, plus, plus the cost of inflation as determined by the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index, without at least six votes of the City Council. So the way this works is the first five years of the budget, the budget cannot exceed $2 million. On the sixth year, the budget could be $2 million plus the CPI. And if it's more than that, you need six votes of the council to approve that budget. We don't have any, staff didn't have any particular comments about that. No. It's a plan. Yeah, I mean, we certainly have no, we certainly have no issue with it. And everyone agrees that if we needed more, something extraordinary probably is underway. Uh, there's been a real problem at the pump station there's been a flood, something has occurred and, uh, you know, the city council will probably be willing to act. Chris? Yeah, I was going to say that the, the, uh, the $2 million threshold, um, uh, exceeding it would be something that elected officials should decide rather than, than, than us. Uh, I'd be comfortable with that. Okay. We'll keep moving down at, uh, down on item G. Um, they're suggesting striking the language uh, calculations of bills for each property shall be determined by the Department of Public Works. Um, I don't have any real issue with that. Um, the authority established in 280-1 basically says that um, the utility known as the Stormwater and Flood Control Utility um, would be under the day-to-day -day, uh, supervision of Director of Public Works and the General Supervision of the Board of Public Works. So by establishing that, you know, follows that we would be the ones to prepare the bills, so we didn't really have an issue with with that deletion. Um, he's proposing additional language under G to replace that, which is sort of non-related, but it reads, after calculating the billing rate for a square foot of hydraulic area in subsection B, the Board of Public Works will establish a unit rate for each of the three classes of small residential properties in accord with subsection C. So subsection C was um, referenced referencing um, the three tiers of small residential properties that were proposed um, for the purposes of developing standard billing rates. 
um, we don't really have any problem with uh, the intent, what we believe to be the intent of this language. The only issue that we have is the term unit rate is not, wouldn't be the correct term. The correct term would be standard fee. So it's not a unit rate that would be established for each uh, category of, of residential bill. It would be the standard fee, the $61 or the whatever the fee was that we've been discussing for each category. So we were okay with it with the exception of um, with that change, replacing the unit rate with standard fee, and that's reflected in comment 13. How would you feel about standardized fee? You are the chairman of the Board of Public Works. <laughs> Uh, standardized would be fine. Yeah, and well, it, it, like it, it's, it's not standard forever. It's standardized year by year. Standardized would be good. I always feel a little unprepared if I don't have my dictionary to look up these things. So if you go to page 6, you uh, see two thirds of the way down. Um, Councilor Adams is proposing deletion of receipts from the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall be used for the following purposes. Deleting that and replacing it with the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall only be used for direct and indirect cost of the utility including. So we tied, you know, this basically ties back to the Councilor's suggestion that direct and indirect costs be, be defined above. Um, I think if the changes to those definitions were made as we had suggested, it would be, it might be a little more accurate. And wouldn't require necessarily any changes to what is proposed in this particular line. On page 7, on section 280-9, on the section on exemptions, um, Council Adams is proposing deletion of uh, item B2, which reads public or private land for the permanent agricultural preservation restriction or conservation restriction held by the city into a state or other permanently protected undeveloped land as documented by recorded land at the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds approved by the Board of Public Works. So there was an inclusion in the ordinance that uh, these properties I just described would be exempt from receiving a fee. And Council Adams is um, proposing the deletion of the exemption for those problems. Again, uh, staff doesn't have a comment. That's clearly a policy decision in one way or another. Um, if the board wants to, if you have a comment, if you want, if you have any comment, we can include something there. Um, there was some uh, gentleman at the, from the Ag Commission at the meeting Monday night was making some points relevant to this, suggesting that it was important to keep an exemption for those. Was Richard Caskey? Yes. I, I'm just curious uh, how significant <coughs> having those fees included or excluded, what, what are we talking about? Uh, $17,000. $17,000, okay. Not significant. Yeah. It's less than 1%. Exactly. talked to Mr. Jasky after the meeting and suggested that it, he get in touch with his counselor and the counselors at large to, uh, to let his opinion be known about this particular issue. Um, he was raising the points in, the, in that public forum, which is great, so everyone's aware of the issues, but it's important that, I mean, obviously, Councilor Adams has proposed this change. It would be good for him to hear from the people that it's impacting as well. That That's in there because Wayne Fiden was a felt he needed every tool available and as he tries to get, encourage people to sign their land over to permit restriction. So in a way we don't have a dog in this fight. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Well except that there's a precedent that we said that we do do allow some sort of exemptions for good causes or community supported yeah. causes and with one in the toehold to come down the line right. a little later and say, what about this? <coughs> well, the uh, task force was, uh, uh, would, would you 
to agree. They task force thought everyone should get a bill. Yeah, however, smart. yeah. Although, to be honest with you, I don't think we were sufficiently smart about these two particular right. exemptions. Okay. Um, I think if we, I think we would have found a way for them to pay, but. <laughs> Um, but I, I think we would have acknowledged the, the fact that there is um, uh, a good reason to have an incentive for people to do this kind of thing and, and how to balance that out. Um, this was this was a category. I mean, because I, I spent a lot of time thinking about the exemption stuff, and this was a category. These were two categories of property that I, I had absolutely no understanding of. So um, I think I think. Force at that point would have to, you know, beg ignorance and say, let's 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 move forward. Well, is there an appetite for the board to have any comment on this? Well, only in that uh, it seems like these two uses would be terrific places to see um, the entities that control those lands work towards getting credits, because I would imagine that those the impact that they have. I mean, if you take the fee away from agriculturally protected land, then there's no incentive for the farmers to participate in any of the credit, you know, that you can get credit for some of the, mm -hmm. the fee by doing good things that support mm -hmm. the end goal. So that, that would be my argument, is yeah. to leave it in and encourage them strongly to take a look at reducing the, the cash impact by paying attention to the credits. When I talked to Mr. Jasky after the meeting on Monday, um, he admitted that um, it's somewhat of a philosophical argument because in Terry's presentation he had described what the bills would be, and um, the bills aren't that great, you know, on an annual basis. And, and even even Richard suggested it's it's more philosophical than anything since it's not a ton of money. But you know, what is in his mind, it's like what is the decision that is correct, what is right, and personally, you know, based on your own opinion. So. The the maximum bill. Down in the meadows would be eighty dollars a year. Right. So it's they read the credit and incentive <coughs> policy. I said we could get it down so that we're paying them. No. <laughs> I think the maximum incentive would be fifty percent of whatever the fee is. Yeah, in, in this case, it's twenty. But um, uh, the whole thing was constructed on blanking on uh, Mr. Hydraulic Acreage. Dan. Yeah, Dan deliberately constructed it so that his hope was that the, the building down in the meadows would be so minor that it, it wouldn't cause strenuous objection. Well, and, and I believe he was successful. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is more of a philosophical argument, so I actually support taking the exemption out. All right, so we can endorse this. Well, I know how I feel. Okay. But I, don't, I can't speak for the whole board, but I would recommend that we support Jesse's recommendation to remove it. Well, let's see how it goes, because people might peel apart on different parts of this, but mm -hmm. maybe at the end, if we can broadly support it, great. And if, if we need to look at it one at a time. So section 280-10 is, uh, is the discussion of credits. Um, Councilor O'Donnell, should I wait? Yes. We have two other people taking this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we have meeting, but we're so happy to see she's beckoning me a scarf or something over there. 280-10 um, uh, is the discussion of credits. Um, Councilor O'Donnell, if you go to the top of the page, top of the next page um, is had inserted a date um, by which the credit policy would be adopted by the board. So he's saying by July 1st, 2014, the Board of Public Works would adopt a credit policy. And then he added um, the, uh, the line that states the city council should have the authority to modify the credit policy at any time. And then he added that the credit policy should be available for inspection by the public at the DPW and on the city website. All items which uh, seem perfectly reasonable to us, we didn't really have any comments on them. Uh, as you slide down page eight, down to item F, um,
Councillor Adams had proposed language comparable to what uh, Councillor O'Donnell had suggested, and it reads, stormwater management and flood control utility fee credit policy as developed, maintained, and from time to time amended by the Department of Public Works and approved by the Board of Public Works may be amended at any time by the City Council. So clearly there's a desire in the Council to dabble in credits in the future if they want to do so. And again, it's you know, happy to have them do that. I have a question. Yes, the credits. The credits come out of the two million dollars budget, and are the fees tweaked to make up for the credits? Uh, the budget would be established and implemented, and then if people applied for credits, it would be, it would result in a reduction of the revenue for that year, because we don't know in advance what the impact would be. Although we have done some very ballpark order of magnitude type of, types of calculations to figure out for large properties that would apply for credit, that the value of those credits, if everybody that could apply for one applied for one, would be somewhere in the order of fifty to seventy-five thousand. If everybody did it and got approved mm -hmm. for that amount, so it would be that amount of reduction in the revenue for, for a year, somewhere in there. Which could be made up of in the succeeding year. It could, once you know what it is. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, the last page, on, uh, on page 10, um, Councillor O'Donnell has proposed um, Section 280-13, Public Reports, um, which states the Board of Public Works will make an annual presentation to the City Council providing information relating to the work and projects financed by the Stormwater and Flood Control Utility in the previous year, including to the extent practicable an account of the expenditures from the Stormwater Management and Flood Control account and projected future expenditures. The Board will also present this information in a written report accessible on the City website. Um, again, um, we had no comment on it, perfectly reasonable to report on activity with the City Money. So the first thing the Ordinance Committee is looking for is our comments or endorsement of what Jim has just walked us through. Any discussion? Does anyone feel like it would be better to look at them one at a time, or would you be comfortable just with a blanket endorsement? I'm comfortable with the blanket. Comfortable? Can I have a comfortable uh, okay. uh, I would, motion? I, I move that we accept these brilliant comments that, that um, Mr. Marilla made and move on. And um, are you comfortable allowing him to finish working out the language on that first one with Jesse? I think that's a brilliant idea. Okay, great. So all in favor of endorsing these comments with that one proviso? Well, did we come to get? Did we discuss them as a board about the exemption? Because I, that, that I was think a comment. I'm, I'm hearing Rose enthusiasm for deleting that paragraph, and you you endorse deleting that paragraph. Right. I, yeah. Yes. That's why I was asking. Do you want to go through these one like number one? Okay. Number two. Vote. Number three. Vote. Or do a blanket endorsement of these. Well, we're pretty close to a blanket. Yeah, I think that that's Mo's ro that's Rose motion. That's Mo's motion. <laughs> <laughs> She's tricky that way. Yeah. So we have a, a, a motion, and do we have a second? A second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of endorsing these amendments as proposed by Jesse and Ryan? Aye. Aye. Great. Now the next thing we have <coughs> is the staff has come up with a few little tweaks and adjustments. Uh, you, know, you, you read this, every time you read it, you think, oh, this would be a better word. This would be a clear <coughs> way to say that. So Jim has uh, a second thing. And now this would be in the category of suggestions from us to the Ordinance Committee. OK. Uh, Doug has spent a great amount of time deliberating the details, uh, as have I, and, and we put our collective heads together and come up with these suggestions that we'd like to consider moving forward um, to the council. Uh, and I'll, I'll walk
not get through these, and if I misspeak, Doug will correct me, as he so often does. Um, on page two, um, at the uh, near the top under definitions, um, the definition for credit, we would like to have credits defined as credit means a reduction in the amount of stormwater and flood control utility fee charged to a particular property period. And we'd like to take all the other extenuating discussion um, and remove that from the definition. Uh, and the comment that we have there is that a broader, simpler definition of credit is proposed so that the credit policy can include financial need based and senior credits not included in the current definition. So the current definition is a little too restrictive. Uh, by the time you start to work on the actual credit policy, uh, by having a restrictive definition of credit limits what you can do within the policy itself. So one of those simple definitions. Yes, of course. Um, I, I'd like to support that. I think that um, in the broad discussion about credits, and exemptions, that these are really ultimately policy decisions um, and that we should not tie the hands of uh, the city council in, in their ability to alter these in any way, shape, or form moving forward. So uh, the broader the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, 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 with the caveat that I'm sure there are going to be specifics where I'm going to be very pained to do so, but, but as far as broad general definitions, I think that that's that, that's the appropriate approach. Great. On page three, uh, at the very top, um, we're proposing in the definition for non-residential property to strike the word improved. So it, it reads non-residential property means property that is not residential property as defined. And there's a long list of properties um, that describes that. Um, a non-residential property may be, a, may be an unimproved property. So that was the reason for deleting that. As you move down the page, sort of in a purpley color, um, we're proposing a definition for pervious surface. Um, earlier on, a few weeks ago, Councilor Adams had, had suggested that a definition for pervious surface be added. And you know we felt it was appropriate to do that. The, the term pervious surface is used within the ordinance itself. We're proposing language that reads like this. Pervious surface means those areas that allow the unimpeded infiltration of stormwater into the soil. Common pervious surfaces include, but are not limited to, lawn areas, forest land, agricultural land, meadows, and other undeveloped land. In determining utility fee calculations, all land on a parcel of property not defined as impervious land will be considered to be pervious. So, as you'll recall, the determination of the fee on any property is based on dividing the property in its entirety to a certain amount that's impervious and a certain amount that's pervious. Um, so this definition, we think, covers that pretty well. Um, as we move on to page five, <coughs> in the middle of the page under letter E, um, this is, might be the most substantial comment that we have in terms of uh, changes to the ordinance. What we're proposing to do, essentially, is you'll see in the middle the, um, the blue highlighted language that we're striking. We're, we're proposing to remove um, how the tiers are defined for small residential property. So originally, the ordinance read that properties, there would be three groups of small residential properties. Properties with less than 2,000 feet, square feet of impervious area. Properties with greater than or equal to 2,000 square feet and less than 4,000 square feet of impervious area, and properties with greater than or equal to 4,000 square feet. And what we know based on looking at the data is that those numbers of 2,000 and 4,000 may not be the numbers that we want to use once we have the actual data in. So these were very based on very preliminary analysis. So what we're proposing to change is the underlying language, which reads, small residential properties shall be divided into three groups based on the amount of impervious area. These groups will be sized such that 25% of properties will be in the smallest category, 50% of properties will be in the middle category, and 25% of properties will be in the largest category. Those percentages actually reflect what we've been talking about. Um, but rather than specify the 2,000 to 4,000, we're just specifying the percentage of properties that fall in each category. We think it's a pretty clean way of doing it, making it more accurate. So
So you would move the uh, the threshold up or down 2,000, 1,500, 2,500, so that it conformed with this idea of yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it turns so out as we get yeah. it turns out as we get more <coughs> accurate data that in order to get 25 percent of the houses to fall into the small category, yeah. we would have to set the bar at around uh, 2,500 square feet. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but as we get even more accurate data, it may turn out that the correct number is 24, three, yeah. 2430. Yeah. Or, right. <coughs> We added a little bit of clarifying language a little bit further down that the bill for each group should be calculated by using. We, we were striking the word based on and inserted the words by using the average impervious and previous areas of properties within each group. And then we're proposing to add the language that the Board of Public Works shall determine the range of impervious area used for defining each group. So that just states how, how that would work you know, practically. So you make first of all the property, you find the median, put the middle 50% in the middle category, and then you put the far edges in 25 and 25, and then you define, you look at what those cutoffs are in terms of square footage, and that's that's the category? That's right. Okay. You want to do it for us when we start? Sounds like you got it. Doug said he could use a hand for it. Um, we'll do it with a sidewalk chalk in front of our houses, I guess. So. <laughs> um, on page 6, uh, midway down, um, section 280-8, purposes of the fund. We're proposing some uh, the insertion of some language here, which would, in, which would read as follows. Receipts from the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall be used for stormwater management and flood control services as defined in section 280-4. And it also includes the following purposes. And the reason that we did this is that um, this section in A through A through L defines certain purposes of the utility. That's the reason for this section. But um, the services are also defined in section 280-8. I'm sorry, 280-4 at the beginning of the document. So by adding this language simply links the description of the services from the two separate sections together. So they're so they're linked and one section isn't um, isn't viewed independently from the other. Jim, I have a question. Um, I'm looking at this. For example, we've got that uh, runaway brook south downstream from Zanti Beach. Where would that fall here? Do we have a, or the, the retaining wall out on the river road and leaves? Well, under the, under the, so if you go to page three, um, stormwater management systems and facilities are defined as the stormwater management systems and facilities shall mean those natural and man-made channels. So in the case okay. of Sandy Beach, the natural channel would be, would be one that. So it doesn't necessarily fall, it would show up also in 280-8. Exactly. So we think it makes sense to link them. They weren't, they weren't linked. There'd be other ways to fix it. This is a, the easiest way to do it, I think. Okay. Um, if you go to page 8, on item D, um, we're in section, we're in section 280-10, which is the credit section. So D, D states that in order to obtain a credit, the property owner must make application to the city on forms provided by the Department of Public Works for such purpose. And we're proposing the deletion of the forms and replacing forms with application. So we want it to read, the application to be fully completed in accordance with the procedures outlined in the stormwater management and flood control utility credit policy. Mm -hmm. And you'll see in the the comment in the in the uh, column to the right is that the application the application consists of, of forms and required technical information. So we didn't want this to be a little misleading so that people thought maybe they just need to complete a form and get a credit. It's a little more complicated than that. So we just felt it was clearer to do that. So just move, move down into section 280-11, item B. Um, this is regarding um, records of billing. 
and it says that stormwater and flood control utility bills shall be managed by the Department of Public Works for collection. Um, we're proposing the director of public works to be stricken and be replaced by the collector in the next sentence, and I'll, I'll read it, so that it would read, the collector shall keep records of all paid and unpaid stormwater utility bills and maintain financial records for the utility. Um, we don't actually maintain those records here at Public Works. It would be done by the collector's office. <coughs> we had a, had a discussion with, with Anne Marie about that, and using the word collector there would make it more accurate. Could I suggest the Northampton collect? That office must have a more more accurate name. Um, City of Northampton Collector's sure. Office, or is it, is it the tax collector? Well, that, that's the thing. I'm looking at this, and it's not tax collector. I think that's the, the tax City of Northampton Tax Collector. Yeah, wh whatever the actual name of the office is, because I have to admit, I'm looking at this thinking, is this someone here in the office? Is this? No, a new position. Yeah, I. Okay. We'll make it. We'll make it legal. I think the word collector exists <coughs> in other locations, and we'll make that change. Um, yeah, right. And I just right. pointed out it's, it appears in D. So we'll make that. We'll make that more accurate. And that. Those are really the sum of uh, the things that uh, the Doug and I have talked about. Again, would you be comfortable with an all-embracing hug sort of uh, motion here, or? Yes, I would. I make a motion that we embrace the school of hug. Okay. <laughs> Do I have to make that now? <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the staff recommendations for the ordinance. I second that. Any discussion? All in favor of hugging these um, adjustments? <laughs> Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Uh, now, do you want to also go through this? This is just FYI for your amusement during the week. So we have uh, Doug has been working to be diligent on this. I'll give him most of the credit for uh, for what's good, what's bad. I'll, I'll take the credit for it. Uh, he's been working on uh, adding meat, sort of meat to the bones of the policy, <coughs> um, and it's really built on the subcommittee work that the board of public works had done and providing description of the types of uh, credits and incentives that would be good to consider and the, the percentages and um, basically we've added uh, more description for each one of those. Doug has started to put together uh, an application form that's attached as Appendix A, so we just ask that you try to take a read through this and we'd love to hear comments or we can talk about the next meeting. Okay, great. Thank you, Doug. So next, uh, set street acceptance hearing date for Boggy Meadow Road, i.e. Cook Avenue, for them up. And also number two and number, no, no. so we should take number one and two together. So we, we, have, we need two of those street acceptance hearings. Where is Bridgeview Road? Bridgeview Road is just before Loudville Road off of Route 66 just before the West Hampton Town Line. It's a development that was put in by uh, Todd uh, Sewers over up. Builders. Uh, yeah. It's a cul-de-sac dead end. Oh, it's like up at the top of the hill? It is. Yeah. Is it it's right at the top a, of uh, King's Hill. Petition or? Yes, petition received. <clears throat> and Chris, so they're kind of in different parts of the city. Huh? Fortunately, it's not a very large city. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Well, I'm just wondering, you know, if, if we took them, uh, what do you think about doing them before one of these meetings? I think mm. it'd be wonderful. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if we did that, just to con do that connection with the third item on the agenda, would we defer that third item on the agenda to another meeting? Or y yeah, I'm thinking so be this, two different meetings. this might be three meetings. Three? Well, in other words, one... Oh, I see what you mean. Three meetings would be good. What do you think of that? Good. I'm fine with that. As long as three of us can agree on that. So, with uh, Ridgeview, you're going to need at least a 10 minute travel time to get back to a meeting. Mm -hmm. 
Jerry might have been doing it. Well, I was hoping I might actually get the right <laughs> to go into the meeting and come in. Because uh, I would definitely change my arrival time. Three ma 83 Massive Bike Street, how long did that come to dock? Um, we, no, we just got it last. Okay, good. There's no hurry. Yeah. Okay. So our next meeting is... 25th? 26th. 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 Yeah. Um, shall we pick one? Uh, we could do Cook Avenue around, I think, 10 or 5. Or we have to 445. Do I mean, yeah, we have to do certified letters on these. How big are they? Um, this one is going to be the same size as um, Cook Avenue was, so that's 70 people need to be notified. 70? Well, not quite. No, there wouldn't be. But you get the Pines Ed development. There's probably the houses up there. You're probably going to be notifying 60 of those abutters. So, do you want to... And they have to be 10 days ahead? What we could do... You could the do the claims, claims for and Massasoit then next time, and that would give you a month to... Have plenty of time then. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Massasoit next week. Can you go with that? Sure. Okay, so, so we'll do Massasoit on the 26th, <coughs> and then just whatever your pleasure is, but we'll do each of those one before each of the two meetings in March. Okay. So 5 o'clock or 5.15? Oh, for... Uh, yes, it's right. How much time do we need for the claims here? Probably 15 minutes. 15, okay. So, so 5.15? 5.15. Okay. okay. And then I... And then, I and then maybe 4.45 for the two road hearings? Sure. Okay, great. So we'd have one on March 12th and March 26th. No. Oh, yeah, March 12th and March 12th. Okay. 445. Do we want to identify which one we go with first? Take them in order. That's yeah. fine. So, so we'll, we'll do Boggy Meadow, Meadow first Meadow and, and Ridge Road second. Okay. Yep. And the what time did you say? 450? 445. 445. Uh, great. Okay, next is a contract for property boundary survey in Conway, <coughs> Hatfield, and Whaley to Heritage Surveys in the amount of $17,000. And this is coming out of the water enterprise system. So $17,300 um, is the cost. We had three quotes on this. The high bidder was $20,000 for the work. I can point out the parcels here. There's three parcels. Uh, you have the fiber parcel here. Uh, we have the cyber parcel, which is just up here at Mount Street Reservoir. And then we have the Galanco parcel here. We have a purchase and sale on one. We have verbals on the other two that are moving into purchase and sale agreements with the lawyers. Cool. Just curious, how big are the lots? State. Approximately would be okay. Well, from here they look pretty small. Um, the Bardwell in Conway is 26.5 acres. The one at Hatfields or Mount Street Reservoir in Hatfield is 52 acres. And the one on Waitley by the um, West Waitley Reservoir is 3.7 acres. Okay. Any other questions about this surveying work? All in favor of approving this contract to survey those properties? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. 
Uh, next contract for residential food waste collection for the residential food waste collection program for alternative recycling and the amount not to exceed twenty four thousand dollars. This is for our food waste composting services that we offer here at the transfer station. Um, we had no bids from just two other firms or three other firms. We had no bids from Valley, Triple T, and Waste Management, and Alternative Recycling was the only bid. It was $11 per cart uh, for pickup and delivery to a composting facility, and um, it's not to exceed $24,000. How does it compare with the current cost? Uh, current cost is $850 a cart, <coughs> so it went up. Gary? How big is a cart? I don't know what it looks like. They're 90-gallon totes, 96-gallon oh, okay. totes. All right. They're on wheels. Do they need special equipment to pick those things? A good back? They must. Really? That's how they do it? I don't know how they, they're, they're picking them up personally. That's a few hundred tons. Plus, well, it could be a lot of, yeah. lot of weight. Was, this is food waste, right? Mm -hmm. That could be really heavy. It's basically water. water. Yeah. It's the density. Yes, Mr. What's the period of the contract and does this obligate us in any way beyond this fiscal year? No. Services are provided as we request. And is this, looking at the budget, is this the food waste line item cost? Yes. So in this year's budget, we had a budget of 10000 projecting that it was going to be, it's going to end up as 14000 Man, you people love the free service. You're integrating all of the data. I like this. I <laughs> Well, apparently that that demand is actually growing. Like people are actually doing it. Which is are you cool. looking at data? No, no. I mean, <laughs> actually using the uh, the, uh, the centralized compost. Oh, I thought you were talking about the data. No. Data. I'm out of the data. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So almost all in favor? A week. Pardon me? That's almost five hundred dollars a week. Yes. A lot of money. Is it a lot of food waste? How did you calculate that? You just divide the total number by the number of weeks? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a not to exceed contract. There's no guarantee they're going to spend all that money in the course of a year. And the amount that varies, we have data. We have um, but the, the amount that we haul out depends on the season, obviously, the types of materials that we get in. But it's not, I mean, it adds up, obviously. I'm talking about $25,000 contracts. So. Not, not to exceed. So, all in favor of. Hmm? And what was it? This looks like it was about fourteen thousand. They are not to exceed contract. Was it in the spend of the hall? Okay, we hear it. Especially now that we're tightening our belt. I know. Feeling the feeling the lashes. Okay, so all in favor of approving this contract for handling residential food waste. Aye. 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 Thank you. And I'll just make a note that the North Central High School Environmental Club just started an expanded composting program. Okay. I'd like to say it's Smith College recently ran their numbers. I don't know if Roger's aware of this or not, but they got they're, they're above seventy percent recycling, and it, the vast majority of the change it was very hard to get above forty percent. It's food. Mm -hmm. They really embraced it and worked on it. And we it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next contract for timber harvesting to. Joseph Adams and the amount of eighteen thousand one hundred and thirty uh, credit. Did you nope. miss a change you order? Did. Oh, sorry, did I have my time. Change order number two to contract three fifty three dash eleven to GCA Geo Environmental for dam repairs, middle and lower Roberts Meadow Dam evaluation and the amount of zero. It's a time extension until the end of this year. Second. So contract we have with GCA for um, Preparation of phase two alternative analysis to repair the middle Roberts and lower Roberts dam. Those studies are actually done. The, the contract also includes preparation of operation and maintenance manuals for each of the dams. Those are in the process of being completed. Um, the budget 
on this contract is $136,800. We have about $9,000 in change left to expend. Probably will be done in the next, uh, I would say, in the next couple of months. So it's just a time extension that would allow them to bill to the uh, to the extent of the contract. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of extending this contract? Aye. Aye. <coughs> now, contract for timber harvest to Joseph Adams, and he, uh, and he will. For this, he will pay us $18,134, and money will go into the Water Enterprise Fund. Second. So we had two bidders on this, uh, Aller Brothers and Joseph Adams. Aller Brothers bid 9000 for the work to be done. There's four stands that are being done under this cutting. Uh, <coughs> there are two stands here, up at the Ryan Reservoir, another stand here at Ryan Reservoir, and then a stand down here at the Mountain Street Reservoir. Uh, basically, according to the RFP, that there's approximately 218 million board feet of green certified standing timber, mainly white pine, red pine, and hemlock, with approximately 452 cords of green certified firewood and softwood pulp uh, that are marked and uh, to be taken down as part of this contract. And do we get some kind of a, a bond or an assurance? I mean, do they pay in advance? Or? They do. They have a payment in advance at contract signing. 30% at contract signing and 70% within 180 days of the contract signing or at the start of work. So it's likely that we'll be paid before the cut. Yeah. And that's what happened with Alley Brothers and the work that's being done now. We had the money from them well in advance of them starting the work. Okay, great. Any questions or comments about this? All in favor of approving this contract for timber harvest? Aye. Aye. Change order number one to contract 18-14 for the phase four landfill closure construction to Jay Bates and Son in the amount of $5,256. And as well, there will be a contract extension for the end of this year. And this is money coming from the solid waste enterprise fund. We are, we are riveted on this one. We are there all were, There were two items uh, covered in this change order with Bates Construction related to closure of the landfill. Um, there were items that came up during the course of the work uh, that we requested that they do, and I'll describe them for you if anyone interested. Um, the first item was. Uh, was uh, relocating a four-inch uh, gas line, an existing four-inch gas line from gas well nine to an, to an existing much clean out in phase four area, area was removed during construction and then reinstalled above the cap surface. The reinstallation was needed to provide vacuum to the leachate clean out. It wasn't shown in the original drawings, so it wasn't included in the contract. We asked them to do it. They did that item for $2,882.50. Um, the second item on this change order was um, work related to a per uh, perimeter stone line swale. The perimeter stone line swale along the toe of the slope between the phase three cap, which is an older section of the landfill, and the landfill gas flare area required additional fill and stone in order to provide more slope and volume to accommodate surface runoff from the exterior slope adjacent to the flare. So there was some additional work that was required in the vicinity of the flare that wasn't shown um, on the construction plans. They took care, care of this item for us for $2,374. So the total value of the change order is $5,256.50. A lot of words. Very wordy, BJ. She's asking me not to be so dirty. <laughs> Working. Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> So, any comments about these two uh, change orders? Oh. All in favor of approving them? Aye. Aye. Next change order number one to contract 168 14 for the Bradford Street Pump Station Force Main Replacement to Borges Construction in the amount of 27884 And that money will come from the Sewer Enterprise Fund. It would come from. Second. There's also two items uh, 
questions that are combined into this change order, um, the board is going to uh, involve replacement of 80 linear feet of 8 inch asbestos cement gravity sewer pipe, um, including handling and disposal of the, uh, of the AC pipe. Uh, the board just is requesting uh, $13,901.18 for out of scope work to replace that 80 feet of pipe. Um, a segment of existing 8 inch uh, asbestos cement gravity <coughs> sewer was damaged during excavation for installation of the new sewer force main. The existing gravity sewer and the new force main were in, in close proximity to one another in an area that suffered damage. Um, there were additionally uh, painted roadway markings provided to indicate the location of the existing sewer provided somewhat inaccurate location in this area. Um, we talked to our field engineer and inspector at, at the time and uh, indicated that uh, the contractor was using acceptable care during excavation of this area, um, but the damage occurred uh, despite of that. So um, we're recommending uh, payment of that item for the replacement of the, the sewer line that was damaged. The second item under this change order involved the purchase of additional rigid foam installation for, for, for the force main pipe. Um, Borges Construction is requesting $13,982.71 for additional rigid pipe insulation above the quantity anticipated um, within the contract um, and also a time extension to receive and install the insulation on the pipe and to complete the installation and the redirection of wastewater flow to the new force main. Um, the quantity of pre-insulated, so the justification, the quantity of pre-insulated pipe um, as shown in the drawings was not sufficient due to the need um, because of shallow, the shallow depth of the force main. In order. So we needed more, we basically needed more insulated pipe than we planned. And in order to buy that pipe, it cost more money and cost $13,983 in additional expenditures to cover that. So, um, staff believes those are fine. They were uh, reviewed and approved by Wooden and Carr and the engineer and the general. A lot of words. So. Any questions about that? Comments? All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. 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 <coughs> uh, next, we have a, a late breaking change order. Uh, number two. For contract 258-13, the Northeast Survey Consultants for land surveying services re related to the private ways in the amount of 26200 mm -hmm. And this is kind of a combo. It's coming out of uh, one-third water, one-third sewer, one-third general. So basically what we have is we have um, the first original contract that we signed was for $23,800, which was the city council appropriation help uh, finance the survey of private ways. Subsequently, you voted to use Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund to help fund this endeavor. In addition, the city also, through a council order, appropriated another $26,200. So there was a total set aside of $100,000 for the survey work to be done. Uh, we currently have uh, 34 private ways that we're looking at. Uh, the field work has been completed by the survey on 26 of these ways. We have plans completed. Uh, which are paper that the staff has reviewed and looked at and sent back to um, uh, uh, for final comment to Dan Staz, the owner of the business, uh, Northeast Survey. So 19 of those plans are back. And we've sent forward 12 total to Alan Seawall for his review and title research so we can produce final mylars. And three of these ways, uh, final mylars have been uh, received by us, but we're waiting for the order of taking from Alan Seawall. What's a mylar? Mylar is a type of medium that the that's printed on. Right, and it's re that's what's recorded at the registry of deeds. Nice. So we're making good progress. We have expended a little over nineteen thousand dollars so far with Northeast Survey, and we're coming to a point that we're going to be running out of money. So I took the next allocation we had to get us to fifty thousand. I'm really hoping the fifty thousand will be enough to complete the project as far as the survey services go. And generally speaking, money that we give them would be connected to deliver. Oh. I actually have a question, um, which maybe I should have asked men before, but it just occurred to me as we talked about the source of funding for this. 
if water's if money's coming from the water and sewer enterprise funds, should that money of the survey only be spent on private ways? They're going to become public ways and have utilities in them. That would be an appropriate question. And the answer would be that would make sense. So I don't know if there's a way we can manage expenditures. It sounds money. like the sort of thing you'd have to. There's only a few streets that don't have public utilities, like. Um, <coughs> Bottoms Road does not have any public utilities in it. Um, majority of these private ways have water and sewer in, in them. The vast majority do. Um, but there's nothing to say that um, in each case the funding has to be one third, one third, one third. Um, money is fungible, right? I mean, you, what you're really saying is you're putting all the money into a single pot coming from three different sources and then paying it out as needed in each direction. So there's really not necessarily a connection between source and outcome. When I code a bill, there's three different or four different sources I'm pulling money from to pay the bill. Oh, so you actually, on the bill, there are yeah. three yes. different... Okay, never mind. But you could code it such that the one-third allocated to water or sewer shows up on the streets that... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would want to know that as a water rate payer. I know I would. I wouldn't want my water rate payer money going to Barnage Road if they don't have a public water supply line. Just to choose an example. Yeah. Yeah. For example. Mm -hmm. So that sounds doable? Yeah. Okay, we're ready. The, the bottom floor does generate quite a bit of stormwater runoff. <laughs> so maybe we should hold off on that survey until after July 1. <coughs> okay, another good thought. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do we have a motion on this one? I make a motion. That we approve this change order? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of authorizing this contract to the Northeast Survey Consultants? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. I think uh, private ways is last. And anything further about private ways? Okay. I don't have anything. Okay. Great. Uh, here's the summary sheet. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, really? What the O's and the X's mean? Like to catch up? Well, if you look above, it was revised on two, uh, February 10th, which is the O. Uh, I saw that. <laughs> Not quite Valentine's Day. <laughs> I was just going to say, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> you don't know how much fun we had putting this table together in engineering. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> Um, okay, so Gary, anything that you'd like to talk about? Interesting. Yeah, Chris? No, I'm good. Almost out, thank you. One more to sign, Chris. Yeah, I'm not going. <laughs> Um, just wanted to let the board know that uh, BJ had sent everybody a flyer when a forest walk on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So Nicole had done one of these a few weeks ago, which was sort of a pre-harvest forest walk to walk around the forest and have them explain what was going to be done. Mm -hmm. Now that a lot of that work has been done, the purpose of this one is to walk around with, with our forest and have them explain what was done and why it was done and what it looks like now. It should be great. Um, I went on the first one, and Mike is really, really good at explaining the types of things that we're doing in the watershed. We had, uh, we must have had about 25 or 30 people in the first one. So, is there a flyer that's online? Because I'd like, I, I yeah. can't go, but I'd love to post it to, to my Facebook page. Yeah. I, I got one electronically, but oh. I, I didn't, I don't know if it's got a link. It, it's already up somewhere. It's, it might be on the, there might be a link to it on the blog. Let me see if I can. Yeah. I, think, I think Nicole put a link to it. Yeah, okay, phone. cool. But it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's Saturday? Saturday yeah. at noon, at ten, from 10 to noon. And uh, the group will meet at the West Whitley Chapel. There, there's plenty of parking on the Williamsburg Road. You can drop the car there. And park. It'll be fun. Is this a snowshoe trip? It will be that day, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> the lodger is out there with a lot of equipment going up and down some of the roads, so we don't think it will be. So we think a lot of the snow that we get will be packed down. If it's not, we want to go out and have hot cocoa. Yeah, I might want to bring some ski poles first to go. Are we talking about this Saturday or something? Yeah, no, this Saturday. 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 Before the snow, it'll still be a little. One pass with one of those machines. And yeah. You know, have a nice path. Right. Uh -huh. We had 16 inches on the last storm. Probably huge. In Asheville. She's pregnant. I was going to say, we know. We, we in Asheville. So there might be a lot more we out there. We folks, yes. Yeah. What's that have to do with anything? Well, I'm just saying. Hey, hey she's up. There's it's a, her turn. It's my comment. So. There's a lot more <laughs> snow out there. Well, we're done. Yeah. Oh, you have more? Okay, go ahead, Jim. Oh, I guess I'm done. I'm so done. <laughs> Anything else, BJ? No. Other than that? Uh, okay, good. And Jim? <laughs> um, you guys are going to repay the Pantley Street, Lucy. Yes. There's uh, loose oh. talk of that, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I go back? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's pertinent. Um, thanks, I'm Jim. There's a meeting uh, at Biker School on Tuesday, the 18th. Uh, engineering will be seeking input on the Hinkley Street design. You know, I was thinking about that and didn't do anything about it, but, um... That's okay. I just was thinking, because we had the conference committee in here the other day that I couldn't make it, so thank you for covering that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Um, well... I guess we have to see if the mayor approved some of the perks. That's true. Approved That's some of the three of us of. Who's up for a minute? I, I, I believe that the wheels are in motion. Um, does, would anyone funny. like to be on a different committee? I know you're having a blast on the tree committee. <laughs> um, if there's room for me elsewhere, I'd be more than happy to take it on, but um, I, I think it's important that I stay, of course, on the tree committee until somebody else wants to take it on. Let's see, we've got the Claims Committee. Um, Joint Committee. Joint Committee. Are, we, are you, are you, I, I, I know you're, it. yeah? Okay. Baby, what do you do? You, you come to <laughs> <work. laughs> no, us. You, you're <laughs> often on the construction. We had a lot of. He's no, on the private way, private yeah. ways committee. That work is not done. It's true, but you've you've been and he's uh, come uh, in and, the, and the, volunteer work. The building committee. Yeah, I keep on. Yeah, I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. Okay. For what's needed? We don't have enough subcommittees. Maybe we need more. No. No. <laughs> I do not think that's correct. How about solid waste? Are you? We all appreciate the fact that. The two of you have been. Yeah. Well, she's doing joint committee, and I'm doing. Well, we're actually calling it reuse, and actually, I did have stuff to talk about with okay. that, but I don't want to interfere in your talking uh, about. I just raised that, and I, but I think your point's well taken that we should wait and see whether or not we get re-upped before okay. we do committee assignments. I'll be disappointed if we're not. You may be the only one, but hey. <laughs> okay, so we'll. But that's a great question. Mm -hmm. <coughs> crossed my mind the other day. Wow, if we only have public ways, what will we do with all of our extra time? <laughs> <laughs> we can finally get the work planning the, or doing the work that we need to do to get the building built through. Yeah, actually, that's yeah, my that's big thing. That's why I'm re-upping. David, how about you? Anything? No. no. So, I want to report that the Reuse Committee has, again, this third year um, they're putting out events for the coming year, March 26th. They're collaborating with the uh, Adult Spelling Bee um, for Zero Waste. On the 12th of April, they're doing pellet bags, uh, styrofoam, textiles, natural durable. The 26th of April, Spring Community Tag Sale. The 3rd of May, Kid Stuff Exchange. 17th of May, 10th of May, collaboration with the SOS Plant Sale. Um, Collaboration on the electronics collection on the 17th of May, and then jumping to October 11th, costume art swap 
15th of November, again, foam, um, paper shredding, and holiday toy exchange, collaborating with the Elks Club, possibly, on the ski, I mean, Lions Club, uh, ski swept. That'd be great. Yeah. Now, but the issue is, there's two issues here. One is, I don't know what the status is of the recycling coordinator position, so that's one thing, because uh, the, per the current person in that job has really done a great job of organizing things, getting people going. She set up a succession plan for the reuse committee, for note taker, facilitator, whatever. So it, it's coming along once you do a good job. But then, if we go in a different direction with our um, solid waste funds, I don't know what's, you know, this may not come under the purview of the responsibility. So that's. I'm, I'm not, we have a meeting tomorrow morning, I'm not going to take that discussion back to them, but it is a concern to me, I mean, in terms of the future, it's too early to talk about that, but I'm putting out there a couple of different, different, there's issues. So the issues as I see them is like, we're doing all these events, the events are great, but they're for our community to take care of trash in our community, reduce the amount in the landfill, but also to be um, um, doing the uh, right, you know, reuse, zero waste concept, um, but also it, it does take um, a recycling coordinator to manage some of these. So, well, can I ask it? Oh, go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to say that we had traded a little while ago about the status of the recycling coordinator, and I had, I had indicated that we were working on job descriptions that included a 35 hour per week position for the, for the, I forget if it was a recycling plan or the, the position, the name of the position has changed, mm -hmm. uh, but it was proposed by staff to be a full-time position, 35 hours per week, mm -hmm. and Ned has been having discussions with the mayor, I think, and human resources about, about that, but it was the intention to rewrite these job descriptions to reflect the differences in the system. Um, the clerk's time is, sort of the division of responsibilities has changed since the landfill closed, and we wrote two job descriptions to reflect those changes, mm -hmm. um, and the recycling planner was a, proposed to be a full-time position, but we don't know at this point where that's going to land. Exactly. So <coughs> I, I, I just would like to have some guidance from the board if I should say anything or just have everything, have the vote state course until we know more as a group. Simultaneous with this is that there's been a very active group working on the Glendale Road Reuse Center with some ideas and basic renovation needs. Again, if we decide to withdraw somewhat from having um, uh, trash and reuse um, support from the city, from, from the Board of Public Works, both, both entities, that reuse center, we should not go forward with that. Unless it could be self-supporting. Right. But without, I mean, yeah. I, so I'm, I guess I'm just sharing this all with you. I guess I won't share anything tomorrow morning. Um, <coughs> you, you but I'm excited about all the <coughs> events because just in terms of our community and landfill and filling things up, having these events happen is a great reuse, recycle. It's a good community um, effort and it's a good zero waste effort. Does do your customers at these events seem to be coming because they were coming to drop off trash? Or I mean do they go to this side of the street then that side of the street? Or do you think you'd get a crowd anyway? I think we'd get a crowd anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know what would be interesting to think about just in terms of policy mm -hmm. is whether we should be careful not to use things like the cell tower fees. Mm -hmm. it, it's clear the bank program's not generating any kind of surplus mm -hmm. to contribute to these events. Mm -hmm. And we should be careful, we, it might be interesting to consider being careful not to take all of our available sources of income and use them to prop up the bank then. If it, I mean, in some ways, well, it, it's an interesting it is. And I, conversation I, that's why I say that I want to hear back from the mayor and, and what. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 
Can I make another sure. suggestion? Um, this is a kind of event where, because I, I, I agree with you, I think people are coming to these things who would not go across the street. Mm -hmm. um, charge them a buck. Just a buck. Give us a buck. Wouldn't be enough to um, be self-sufficient or anything like that, but people will give you a buck. There is a charge for the trunk. That yeah, I'm yeah, that one is right. Yeah. But I mean, even when I go to like the swaps, mm -hmm. which I think is awesome, mm -hmm. I call it swaps. They, people call it drop off, but I end up usually taking away more yeah. in the classics yeah. than. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I just think we're sort of on the edge there, philosophically as well as financially, and I, and no, no sense in shutting doors. No sense in going down roads that are going to be blocked at the end either. So mm. that's all. I, I've shared lot, lots with you, but I don't I guess have a, a too, too much to bring back. Uh, very exciting styrofoam band, uh, which has passed in, in Amherst. There's a lot of interest in our city at, at proposing this. Jesse Adams for Dwight, the Youth Commission, and Ryan O'Donnell. Uh, so there may be on the, on the horizon. And, um, Melinda Shaw, Any of you know Melinda? Mm -hmm. Melinda was the uh, prime mover behind the gay pride parade for years. Um, she uh, she has an idea about painting one of the crosswalks with a rainbow. Um, it's the 10th anniversary of the right to marry in Massachusetts, and it's the 8 millionth anniversary of the parade. Um, I told her two things. Um, it's kind of special paint that we use for the crosswalks. It's not just, you know, cancer paint. Although that would, that might be one option to do something that would wash away, I suppose. I said there are technical aspects to it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that um, that I would require some thought. And and then there might be um, aesthetic considerations. You know how long? What's it going to look like as it fades? It's, it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. I told her I would bring it to the board. She was also thinking of talking to Bill Dwight. I said that'd be great. Mm -hmm. You know, this is you got to get lots of people thinking about this. I don't think it would be <coughs> something that we would decide and then just suddenly spring it on the mayor and the city. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we decided that three months ago. So I think there probably ought to be a conversation. A couple of years ago, Turner Strauss did some special fish painting, mm -hmm. and it's it's still there. It's it's worn away, but it really seem to be attractive and made it made the downtown crosswalk. Well, Melinda said look to look online, which I have to confess I haven't done, but she said some of them really look amazing. Mm -hmm. But someone wanted to do geometric designs mm -hmm. inside of our lines mm -hmm. and the line, there's... No, they actually, the last proposal they came in, they wanted us to go back to our um, perpendicular bars that run the full length of the crosswalk itself uh -huh. and then paint in between those two bars. And mm -hmm. we've gone to the, what we call the ladder, which right. are the stripes every two feet on center and different lengths and widths and so on. So you could look at painting between those, but I hate to lose our, our standard, which is very visible for pedestrian crossing. Right, I, no, I, there's definitely a technical aspect to it. So I like the concept. I do too. Um, so well, we, we've also uh, talked about this before. Mm -hmm. other, other artists have brought concepts. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ever got anywhere with it. Well, I have good people talk to your people. Okay.